Welcome to Kalimat, the podcast that takes you on journey to self. Let's welcome our host, Shehbanu Khan. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Kalimat Podcast. The following podcast is our brand new season, second episode. Thank you so much for making me a part of your day, and I hope you're surrounded by the greatest thing in this world, love. I am speaking to a friend of mine. A friend who has been a part of my personal journey, a visionary artist, a Web3 passionate and creative professional from the capital city of Pakistan, Islamabad. With formal education in textile and graphic design, the guest journey has led her from collaborating with top-notch organizations to founding her own startup. And as seasoned creative professional, she pushes boundaries with her fellow local artist turning their passions into thriving businesses and that's not it she doesn't stop here she's founder of chap magazine one of its kind that caters creative work during our conversation we'll be diving into the beautiful concept of one unit a notion that resonates with her upbringing nurtured in a home that values self expressions coexistence and of course unity I sit down to ask her Kalimat signature questions, sharing light on personal developments, awareness, and lessons to keep and unlearn. Our goal is to provide you with fresh perspectives on journey to self that we all can relate to, all while maintaining a lively and enjoyable conversation. And that is exactly what is going on in this podcast. Let's welcome our guest, the gorgeous Mahnoor Niazi. Right, so let's start the conversation by asking you our signature question. How is the weather in your heart? All right, um, that's actually a very interesting question, and I am very reserved, but I'm also very emotional. So there's usually like a rainbow of a lot of emotion, and it just ends up being cold all the time <laughs> because I try to manage them a lot, like the storm of emotions that are like going on in my. heart all the time so it's chaos in there there's no exact whether the seasons are really changing all the time we'll discover a lot more of these topics in detail but before that would you like to share your background with us a bit about yourself for the listeners i graduated in 2016 i did textiles graphics and all of that i've always been into getting lots and lots of experiences or doing lots of things at the same time and i didn't know there is there's you know terms called terms like economics and um all of those things where you get to do a lot of things and some some things work for you some things don't and i've probably spent all my 20s doing all of that so uh like me and my friend we made a startup and we were incubated at at national incubation center mm-hmm. uh, and we graduated from there um in 2019 uh and we were like the star one of the star startups and we were awarded uh, the bootstrap startup mm-hmm. of the year and you know that was an extremely amazing experience because uh, our mentor there uh, he kind of taught us to always work with the resources that you have available and don't wait for anything so yes. that's basically the biggest lesson like you know one of the biggest lessons of my life that you mm-hmm. don't wait for anything and you know with him actually uh, he was a project director of NIC and with him we started uh, this magazine called startup guide and it it turned out to be at that time pakistan's first digital magazine for you know startups mm-hmm. and like entrepreneurs and all of that and it did really well we exited uh, around i think 2020 or something and mm-hmm. yeah so ever since then i've been into e-commerce i've been into we started in a creative agency back then so we could make revenue from the from day one instead of you know asking for money from someone else family or friends or mentors or the market or anything i have been working since you know 12th grade like i was uh, in 12th grade when my sister used to give me these you know small descriptions or content writing stuff she would take up work and i would also freelance with her and i also started doing graphic designing while i was in university and it was such a liberating experience and that has kind of uh, you know contributed a lot to my life mm-hmm. and it's a lot of fun for me because for me it's all in the journey or the process that's a lot of cool work and you know um i i kind of think like and you don't become an artist just like you know in a month's time or a year's time i think it really starts in your subconscious mind i would really like to take a step back 
And I do want to explore your upbringing. Growing up in a household that encouraged not only your self-expression, but also involved you in the process of discovering themselves. Could you please elaborate a little bit and share with us how did it feel to be in that environment? And how did it impact your journey to discover yourself later in your life? Ooh, if I was to kind of, you know, put it down briefly and now that I understand most of it, I feel like, you know, now we talk about, you know, think for yourself and do things that your heart tells you to do and all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. And although these things are very important, yes. But I'll tell you something. We were raised in a very selfless environment, you know, where people weren't like I... I, I, I have like mom and baba and I have my poopoo. Like we were in a joint family and she's like a she's like a third parent to us, right? She, she used to run this charity that I've been a part of since I was nine. Like there was a lot happening in our family all the time. Like everything was for others. So the oh. so the gist of all of it that I understand in you know, in any work environment or family or anything, that really helped me a lot. The idea of a unit. Mm. Everyone in that unit is trying to build it to kind of make it more beautiful for the other people to survive in, to kind of, you know, giving them the security or the respect or including them in all of that. And I feel like when everyone is taking care of each other, if you think mm -hmm. about it, everyone is taken care of. No one is left behind. Like instead of thinking about yourself, you know, I care about Sherbano, Sherbano cares about me. If you think about it, both mm -hmm. of us are taken care of. So that is a, like a really beautiful concept for me. And, you know, the fact that we were always like, we were all mini adults. That's how we refer to ourselves <laughs> now. You know, I like that were, word. Right? So still, still, you know, in our family, there the kids in our family are like mini adults. And we were, we were included in all kinds of like really, really big people conversations. And if there was anything going wrong, right? Anything exciting, anything sad, anything. We were just included. And I think that has played a role in me getting to know, uh, I wouldn't say myself, but I would say mm. making me aware of my surroundings and kind of mm. gauging or keeping a check on myself according to that. So, yeah. This is a beautiful concept. And thank you so much for sharing that. I think people who grow up in such environments nurture differently. And you yourself is a living example of that. So, But speaking about environment and being aware of yourself, uh, how well do you think you know yourself? Oh. <laughs> and to make it more simple, let me put a number. So from scale of zero to 10, how well do you know yourself? I don't think I know myself uh, a lot because, as I said, I think things change and I let them. I feel like... We should let things change. You know, any emotion that comes to me the very mm. next moment than this, I accept it. I'll try to see how it impacts me or how mm. it kind of gets placed in my life or in my mind or in my heart. And I'll mm. be a different person and I'm open to it all the time, adapting mm. or accepting and all of these things. So I, I feel like I... Try, I would say, mm. I always try to be aware of everything that is going on around me. I try to do right by what I'm given. And that, I, I, can, I can scale that trying to uh, an eight or a nine, you know, mm. because I try my best. But I mm. cannot say that I, I don't plan on knowing myself, all knowing, because I don't think anyone but him... And, and, and that's, that's the magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's very important to understand. I don't want to be fully aware of myself. I cannot say that I'm mm. the ultimate human being ever. I don't think mm. I'm complete in any moment because as mm. soon as I say that, I'm closing myself off to kind of, you know, a whole world of probably emotions or understanding or opportunities or anything that might come my way. So mm. I, I'm always totally ready to accept those things. So, yeah that I've asked this question to many people um, and, and they would just give me a straight up number but won't really elaborate the whole trying uh, part of it. And I think you have done a good job because as humans, all you can do is try, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's, it's a lot of fun also. Mm -hmm. There's like a lot yeah. of living in it. You're not just surviving through life, you're actually living it. 
because yeah. you're understanding why you're here. You're mm. understanding how everything around you reflects some part of you, everyone, how they reflect a part of you, you know? So, so that all that uh, awareness, I think that is more to do with surroundings than, you know, mm. the internal matters, uh, because I think it's, it's a very parallel kind of a battle. So, yeah. Mm where you are discovering a lot about yourself every single day. Is there anything that you have discovered about that you did not know before? And if you have, what are those discoveries? Oh, there are so many things every day. You know, little, little things that I feel like I'm not capable of doing. Uh, I studied arts, yes. My background is like in creative industry and all of that. But I was always, like, I've never really tagged myself as an artist until very recently. And that too, it was required by a certain mm. path that I was taking. And it was important for me to identify what I'm going to get addressed as in this certain community, right? Otherwise, I always consider mm. myself like as a creative professional, think more into all the other sides of arts and the opportunities and the revenue streams and all of that, that's how I've been built or that's how I've been kind of um, conditioned. But the mm. fact that I I was an artist somehow, that I, like I do mm. a lot of mediums. I, I experiment with a lot of mediums. I do digital, I do abstract, I do, you know, all photog- like photography, a little bit of it, you know, all, all kinds of mediums. But I, mm. I never considered myself as an artist. I was just expressing myself. And that is like a very huge discovery for me. Okay, this is also an artist. Mm -hmm. That was a discovery for me, I think. Yeah. So if you, now listen carefully, okay? If you were given the chance, okay, would you choose to have a conversation with your younger self over a cup of coffee or older self? Hmm. Oh my goodness mm. okay <laughs> I am can I do can I do neither <laughs> I love that it's I like where I am I'm present about being content and you know this is my answer to almost everything in life these days when, when they're like okay why are you where you are I'm like I think I'm happy where I am I don't want to go yeah. anywhere <laughs> I, I feel like it's, it's all it's, about living in the moment mm. and I want to be in this moment I don't want to go back and I agree with you. Have any kind of influence uh, on my impressionable little self, or or kind but of? But it's just cup of coffee. Yeah, but and it's no, just cup of coffee, right? So, Banu, knowing two of me, you you think there won't be any conversation? Of course, you. But this is just one cup of coffee. Maybe you can just go visit them, or maybe just look at them. You don't no, have I to don't want to look at my. Youngest. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? What if she ends up good for her guiding you? To I don't want to know right now. That... No, I don't want to know right now where I'm <laughs> supposed to be or where I'm going to be, uh, and that's a part of my philosophy, yeah. probably, because knowing so much about where you're going to be is just not inherently a part of being mm-hmm. a human, and I might not end up doing the same things that kind of put me there. So I wouldn't want to. Yeah. Again, reflects the kind of person you are, yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Now, this question, maybe I would suggest you to reflect a little bit more. And if it's okay with you, do share why. I want to know your why, only if you're comfortable, right? Okay. So given the option, given the option, would you rather shape your own life according to your desires or pass this opportunity to somebody else who you think needs it more right now? Oh. It could be your family, it could be your friend. But I would definitely not want to. That's not who I am. But um, if someone else wants to do mm. the experiment and they think that they can control it, mm. good for them. I, I let <laughs> I love the word experiment. <laughs> no, because, uh, yeah, I so don't think anyone so can. Yeah, absolutely. Any day. But no, it's not about can or cannot. These are like, you know, sort of scenarios. Okay, I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on. Yeah. 
Too, I would do it. You're too practical. <laughs> I am. I it's it's very th- th- that's exactly where I was talking about. It's all very real to me, Gaurav. When you're talking about something, it's not fun and games. I know. Nothing is fun and games for me. It's all very real. So yeah. You are listening to Kalimat Podcast. So now getting back to you throughout your journey. what is one valuable lesson that you would want to hold on to dearly and on the flip side is there a lesson that you are in the process or have you unlearned it so what do you think hmm um my biggest learning in life is how we you know how we run after things or how we try to mm-hmm. achieve things or something that is a set idea in our head or the idea of something i feel like more than pursuing those things it's it's important to uh, do mm-hmm. right by what we are given or what we have create happiness no one is responsible for your happiness is my lesson in life no matter who they are Motos. no matter mm-hmm. yeah no like mm-hmm. i'm extremely close to my sister extremely close you know she's a, she's a mentor you know she's four and a half years older than me and mm. she's mentored me guided me every day of my life but i still don't expect stuff from mm. her i don't expect her to make me happy i don't expect her to make me feel good i don't expect her to be there for me every single moment of my life or every time that i ask yeah. her to be there i don't accept expect her to be there because that's not right mm. you know i think everyone is responsible for their own happiness mm-hmm. um it's not dependent on friends relatives spouses parents children mm. in-laws the community people around you uh, your clients your customers nothing unlearn is um probably um putting your faith in the wrong mm. people having this like you know profound you know idea of you, about your own capability to probably shape their experience and yours according to what you are envisioning right so mm-hmm. it's basically letting like you know in work we we have to choose people that we have to work with you can't say i'm going to work alone for the rest of my life right so it's mm-hmm. more work related that has inherently not been been in my life from the very day i was born it's more like mm. recent i would say you know um, it's a second socialization yeah, that you learn from your absolutely you working yeah yeah yep so that's it. yeah so that's something that i've i've really learned not to mm. put your faith or not to over expect from people mm. uh, professionally not personally i uh, you know just like i spoke about it your mm-hmm. happiness might not be dependent on someone but where professionalism is due people should be professional mm. and and that's a given that's a given it's not something that is personal i am not supposed to take it personally and my client is not supposed to take it personally so i i choose the people i work with now i choose very like i might not pay me as much but i choose the people that serve my purpose in the long run instead of just going for you know random clients yeah so if you were to choose a color that presents your journey mm-hmm. our journey life journey no i think let's let's stick to our journey what which color would it be and why white 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 yeah always a blank canvas and what is your end goal where do you see yourself in the future Uh, especially when it comes to creating art oh um i just want to keep creating art <laughs> i would say i'm like i'm very interested in shared culture and shared experiences and all of these things that i keep talking about and all of that and i feel like um anywhere i am i would want to um feel the contentment that i feel right now um or more i i i love to adapt so to that is something that um 
is a huge part of my life. So I, I literally like cannot answer this question even if I wanted to. Just like I said before, I have no idea where I'm going to be or who I'm going to be exactly. Like my life has never been really the things that I exactly wanted. It's just been how it's been. And then that kind of teaches you a lot of submission. It kind of teaches you a lot of acceptance. It encourages you to kind of manage stuff or do right by things that you're getting. So I, I feel like how I am going to be, I can answer. I am, I want to be, a, a, you know, a person that serves people, is kind to people. I don't know if, mm. if, if this is probably a very immature answer, like a five-year-old is giving it or something like that. But I, I don't mind being a five-year-old. Um, in this because I have no idea where I'm going to be and, and that's a whole part of like you know the philosophy that I believe in like that is submission to uh, not being in control of anything that you're living and that's exactly how it is no matter how much so you, we try to control yeah so you know I've heard you say this answer a couple of times mm -hmm. and I still wanted to ask you this question because <laughs> I was like let me see because you're so composed you're so clear with what you want. So do you have, uh, you know, so as we wrap this conversation, I do want to hear if, if there is any piece of advice that you would want to share with people that are just beginning their journey, whether through its art, whether through it's in the digital footprint. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually working on a collection. It's called The Process. I always want to enjoy the journey hmm. part of everything. And I think that everyone as a community, everyone can practice that, um, you know, enjoy the process, please enjoy the process, you know, mm -hmm. instead of, um, again, you know, instead of specifying stuff for yourself or restricting yourself to a few things that you can or cannot achieve. And also, you know, I feel like accept yourself and accept people exactly the way they are. Without changing you know? them, yeah. Yes, yes. Without changing them, without and and it's not. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have a bad conversation, or you're not going to have a fight, or you're not going to probably have some kind of a misunderstanding. It's okay, but try to get to know them for exactly who they are, mm. and don't put conditions because I, I I and beyond that, I feel like you always have the power to associate yourself with every anyone you want. And that has a lot of, like, th that is a big, huge part in our religion also. You choose the people you associate yourself with. Not because you think, like, lowly of someone. Mm -hmm. It's just to um, to just be in a phase that you have defined for yourself. It has, it doesn't reflect on them. It's just, you know, they have a path, you have a path. People who are on your path, who are on your uh, journey, and they, you you see, like, you know, okay, the, the, our destinations are a bit aligned. You just get on them that path with them or they just get on that path with you instead of changing your paths all the time or trying to fit in or all of that. So I, I feel like that, yeah. Isn't that a journey itself? Exactly, it is, it is. Okay. And I'm not saying don't explore it, mm. but you asked for a perspective and mm. this is a perspective that I've learned from my experience so far. I'm I Just like I said, I'm not a complete person. I'm not the ultimate mm. person. I'm not anything. But all I can do, like, because this, these are all not facts. And when you're, you're just giving your opinion, mm. you know, it's, it's very, it's very vague. It's very subjective. It's very uh, open to, you know, a lot of exploration. So, yeah. Mm. And, and there's one thing about love, which I think I would like to share with you. In the process, when you, when you love somebody, even if it's, if you, if it's you, sometimes changing too much of that person or that things makes you want to unlove them. Yes, and why you would you want to control them? them? The way they Manu, were. We don't yeah, want to be controlled. Mm -hmm. Who wants to be controlled? You know, yeah. do you want to be controlled? Do I want mm. to be controlled? Nobody wants to be controlled. Why the hell no. in the world would we think mm. that we can demand someone, you know, something and they're supposed to just give it to us? You know, how, how are we supposed to like, you know, ignore the, the, the whole upbringing they've had and control their mm. lives? You just, you know, if you don't like somebody, part ways, mm -hmm. let them be. And the surprise question is really just, just, you know, to further get to know you and the kind of person you are. So kalimat means words in Arabic, right? Mm. Um, so one 
kalimat for you. That summarizes Mahnur. So Mahnur in one word. Ooh, one word? Yes, please. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, I, I feel like um, um, the, the thing that I've, I've tried to do or I associate myself with a lot and it, it mm-hmm. has been like that for a lot of years is indifference. Mm-hmm. So if I were to define Manur, um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll say indifferent. That's such a you answer. To end this conversation, which has been a fantastic one, Mahnoor, mm-hmm. um, is anything that you would like to leave us with? Is there a reflection? It is kind of, you know, um, like in touch with what we just discussed. Um, conversations with real-time people, um, whether they're your friends or their colleagues or they're your mentors or they're your peers or parents, siblings, Anybody, just communicate, please. And and I feel like getting to know actual real people at all times and having the courage to not take everything personally. I also do that sometimes, by the way. Sometimes mm. someone is saying something and you take it personally. And and later on, you, you reflect on the conversation and you feel like, okay, I made that all, all about myself and I shouldn't have done that. I love when there are conversations where people agree to disagree because again, conversations are all about subjectivity and understanding each other or exploring different mindsets on all of that. So I feel like have conversations with people, have conversations with your loved ones and there is nothing more precious than having a good conversation where people can actually be themselves and not pretend to be something. There are so many things that are happening, uh, you know, around us or um, in an office, you'd see this, uh, even online communicating with someone, you will understand it, that they have probably not had the um, acceptance. So they are Mm. now reserved and they're not being themselves. Mm. So that is kind of where the indifference also comes in. I love people. I care about them. I care about everything that's happening in my surroundings, but none of it can, like, you know, should control me or none of yeah. it should uh, have so much effect on me that I change my conduct or unload my worries on somebody or unload my personal opinions on somebody. It's just a subjective conversation, just like this one. Uh, and, you know, I think there's th- th- there should be more conversations like this co- podcast. And, you know, where people are just talking heart to heart and there's like the freedom to say anything you want. And it's just like, again, I'm saying this to everyone who's probably listening um, or will ever listen to this, that this is all subjectively my opinion. This is that none of these are facts. None of I'm not saying I know stuff. I'm mm. not saying it's just anything that I've learned. And I feel like if two people can relate with me and come have a conversation with me, it'll mm. just make my day. I love that. Or they can read our disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a lovely way to end the show and uh, the episode with you, Manu. I really am very thankful to you for taking out the time and for joining me. As a host, I've learned a lot of, from your experiences and would want to reflect further on. It was it was nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a, it's, it's a total player always, you know, to have a conversation with you or to talk to you. And yeah. I hope I've not taken a lot of your energy. No, my energy is unlimited. (laughs) I love that. Most of the times. (laughs) Bye, and thank you so much once again. Thank you, thank you. Likewise. Okay, guys, did you enjoy that? It was so heartwarming to host Mahnoor onto the podcast. I mean, she is a great person who adds so much value to my life. I get to learn from her every day. I want to thank you for being here. I mean, you guys are a huge part of our podcasting journey and we are so grateful for each one of you. I hope you're walking away with a reflection that resonates with you. And as your podcast host, something that clicked for me that Mahnoor pointed out was conversations. And everything that you have for others, 
must start from you. It all begins from you. And I think <laughs> some of our most uh, profound conversations are the ones that we have with ourselves. Those are honest, brutal, messy, the way conversations should be. So start with yourself. And I hope you sit down to reflect on this. Happy reflecting. I'll be more than happy to welcome you next time. Until then, the idea of unity. Yes, take care of yourself and your beloved ones. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening to Kalimat Podcast. For more information, please visit our website, kalimatpodcast.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media. See you all next week.